So I got about 78 responses, um, and I'm gonna figure out here uh, which ones which ones deserve some answers. At Ken01 says, who's the oldest between you, uh, Ryan, and Chris, uh, my two brothers? So my twin brother Chris, uh, him and I both are 25. Um, I was the firstborn twin, so nine minutes ahead of Chris. And then uh, Ryan, he is a year older, so he's 26. Um, I'm the middle child, and Chris is the baby. Sailor M says, have you considered to become a daddy? I mean a real daddy, like have a baby. <laughs> um, I've thought about it before, and um, I think that at one point in my life, you know, it could be something fun to do. Um, maybe when I'm 40, <laughs> and just when I have things more established, but I think that in my lifetime, yeah, you know, I would like to have um, children sometime. It's just maybe now things are a little too wild and crazy for that, and I just don't have the time. I'm not organized enough for it, but I think, yeah, sometime in my life, kids, why not? Grocery Gay says, do documentaries humanize performers or give intellectual veneer to objectification? Well, it's a pretty relevant question and on account that we're, you know, shooting a documentary today. Um, yeah, of course it humanizes performers, you know? We're showing that we're real people, we're just working real jobs, and, um, you know, it's kind of like what actors are doing. Um, we aren't, we don't consider ourselves sex workers. Um, I'm not an escort available for sale, um, and uh, I only shoot with performers who I want to shoot with and who I'm going to enjoy it with. Um, so I think there's a, a, a huge distinction. Not saying that anyone who escorts is doing anything wrong, because I might want to hire you. <laughs> What's some advice you could give to young Kyle growing up? And what advice would you give to your LGBTQ teens? Um, the advice I'd give to myself was that um, being gay is completely normal. Um, I grew up in Texas and in my school even, you know, it was, an, it was like a really nice town, a nice neighborhood. Um, there was no gay kids, virtually. There was like two kids in the whole school that were out as gay and, and you know, and they were kind of considered as being weird. Um, so if I would say to anyone out there that's LGBTQ, um, that's growing up, I'd say, you know, what you are is normal. And um, I used to even think of how great it would be if I was a girl because then this craving for big jock dick all the time would be appreciated by society, but really those societal norms, they're all made up and no matter, you know, where, where you go, it, it will change. So if you go to any major city, um, all of a sudden being gay is, is accepted um, generally. Um, so that's, you know, um, if, if you're not considered acceptable where you are, then just move to a more diverse city and you'll be happy. Sailor M asks, what is the most regrettable decision that you have made? I think that, you know, your 20s, it's full of crossroads. Um, you really don't know what's going to happen. Um, I, I love being in my mid-20s because I feel like I have things more figured out than I did, at least when I was 18. Like, you think you know everything when you're 18, but it's not until you realize that you don't know anything that, that you know, you can really start figuring it out. And I guess that's kind of cliche or whatever, but... Um, but, you know, things just, sometimes you just get consumed by life and what's going on. And um, I call turning 25 like my quarter life crisis. Um, and, you know, it, it, things just started all happening at once. Um, uh, I live, I've lived with Max Carter in like, you know, three different states and like multiple different houses together, like for seven years. And, uh, we kind of like the year I turned 25 was the same year that we moved from San Diego to Vegas to start a whole new thing. Uh, we just had so much going on and uh, that Christmas Max proposed and we were engaged and like there's just so much going on and uh, and it was kind of just at a certain point it was like too much for me and I just felt like I had to get out of it and so um, it was kind of just, um, I moved out.
and I kind of do honestly regret it. So. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> My fans, my says, what company or manufacturer do you most want to establish? What do you think is lacking? I mean, I'd want to start a brand or something like say a consumer product, um, you know, toothpaste, deodorant, and you know, whatever, uh, makeup, whatever. Like, st there's like so much out there that's targeted to women that could be targeted to men, and it's not. And like, you know, like. A lot of guys who stay beautiful, they're like using these products that are, you know, they're so, they're just named, you know, the most feminine things and they're in pink bottles and whatever. And it's like, make this for men and men will buy it. If, as long as you tell them they're not, you know, I think a lot of uh, straight or masculine men won't even touch those things or think about them as appropriate for guys to use because they're in pink bottles. So I'm coming, I'm coming for that market. <laughs> Matt Kaufman says, being an adult star, we can only imagine the wonderful things it brings to your life. What are some of the detractors? Does it hurt you in your personal life, romantic life, etc.? I've been doing this for, you know, since I was 18. And so my whole adult life, I've only known it like this. Um, the wonderful things, you know, it's like if you go out, you know, we kind of get special treatment at clubs and stuff. And, and there's fans and there's like people, they have that respect for you. Um, but some of the detractors are, it's like, you know, thinking of having a relationship with someone that's outside of the industry, it just is, it seems impossible. Um, if people, they, you know, if they're not in it, it's hard to understand what, what it's really like, you know, sometimes it, it definitely has changed my romantic life. And then also the people that want to meet for maybe the wrong reasons, like uh, occasionally I'd like to meet someone that is a legitimate friend that we're kind of mutually um, able to to contribute something and, and like have a dialogue and and have fun as friends and a lot of the time someone will meet you and whether they knew about uh, that you do porn or not at first they find out and then they might start acting differently um, and you'll notice friends that are, they're kind of fake friends where you could say whatever you wanted to, to them and they're not going to get mad at you. And, you know, they're, you know, kind of just, they just want to be associated with you for, for what are the wrong reasons. And so that's definitely a detractor. Um, people think that it's just all the good life. Like, oh, everyone's going to want to hang out with me. Blah, blah, blah. You don't want people to, to be pursuing you just because you're uh, known as an adult film star. Like, you know, it's not, it's not authentic. So I have to keep a much more strict filter than probably most people do. I'm such a twink says, how did you come up with the name Kyle Ross? <laughs> so um, when I first came out to film with Helix, um, we were trying to come up with my stage name. Kyle Ross is a stage name, obviously. And sorry if you guys really thought that was my real name, but that was a stage name. And um, Kyle Ross was a um, internet boyfriend that I had when I was like 17. And we weren't talking at the time, but uh, someone in the office had suggested the name Kyle, maybe like Kyle Johnson. And like, I just wasn't feeling Kyle Johnson. So I was like, hey, Kyle Ross. So it was actually an internet boyfriend. And um, I did tell him that I used his name and he's, I don't think he's too pleased with it, but I think he got over it, and no big deal. He goes by something else on Facebook now. <laughs> Ray007 Ray says, what happened to your uh, gooch piercing? I call it my taint piercing. Um, early on in my filming career, I got my taint pierced, and um, after some time, like, it's like, come on, you have this ring, like, attached to your gooch like in the middle like when you're sitting down for like a long time like at an office job or like it, I couldn't ride a bike and like you're just worried it's gonna get caught on things like there's just a point when I was like I need to take this thing out so um yeah I, I removed it and it's like all closed up and I sold it on eBay I, I got some good money for that <laughs> thank you to the buyer Jasper Park AB says, was the desire to get into the gay porn industry a lifestyle choice um, for money uh, or not having job prospects? Was it lack of education or money that made you decide to do adult porn? 
was it abusive alcohol drug use by parents underlying motive uh, to get in porn as an escape it, it wasn't anything like that um, I've had every opportunity to go to college or to uh, you know uh, get any you know job I wanted to like anyone else could go out there and do it and work for it um, and mostly when I was uh, 18 I started going to the gay clubs in Dallas and I just liked the attention I was getting and so Porn seemed like another way to continue getting all that attention and, and feel loved, so, I lo you know, I went for that. Naked Envy says, Master Roman, stop answering his questions, you douchebag. And you've asked enough questions already, it's not your rodeo. <laughs> Love it. Well guys, thank you so much for uh, taking a look at my Q&A here. Um, hopefully there will be more in the future. And uh, be sure to check out my book, Twink, releasing October 18th. Um, and shout out to all of you who reached out and submitted your questions. Bye!